Hi, this is Dennis with Second Chance Tackle. Today I have the opportunity to work on a Daiwa Saltist. It's the 40H. It's an older uh, Saltist reel. Still in good condition. It's in for a basic cleaning and tune-up. So we're going to show you how to do that today. We'll show you how the reel is made, how to take it apart, how to service it, and of course how to put it back together again. Well, if you like those types of videos, if you like to see and learn more about the art of reel repair, Maybe you're looking just to tune up your own reel and, and you're looking for step-by-step -step instructions. Well, that's what I try to provide in this channel. You essentially look over my shoulder as I work on reels and uh, hopefully uh, learn how to do it so that you can do it yourself. Uh, if you do that, uh, if, you, if you'd like to do that, I would encourage you to subscribe. If you do subscribe, please use the notification button. That will uh, let you know when I'm posting videos and well, you can make a decision as to whether you want to watch those or not. I start by removing the exterior pieces. I took off the retention screw and the cap. And if you have a pen wrench that, uh, and this is not a pen reel, it's a dial reel, but if you have a pen wrench, that wrench will work on taking that uh, handle nut off. Once you do that, you want to remove the star adjuster. You do that by backing it off counterclockwise. Counterclockwise means turning it towards you. All right, that's off. And a good time to tell you, if you don't know these reels, take a picture. And uh, those pictures will help you later on if you get stuck in while you're uh, trying to put the reel back together. Maybe you lose the orientation. Maybe you forgot which part went first. That kind of thing. Pictures are, are a wonderful thing to have like this click ratchet. Notice that this little clicker faces up when you put it on the, the gear stem. When I take my pieces and parts off, I like to put them into a parts tray. I suggest that you find a way to organize your pieces and parts regardless of what it is. Mine is organized chaos, but uh, you may like to, to organize them in the order that you remove the pieces and parts or some other scheme. There's a lot of ways to do it. Just find the one that works for you and uh, make sure you organize as you remove the pieces and parts. If you don't, you'll wind up looking for things and uh, may not find them. I'm going to remove the side plate screws now so that I can get to the gear workings. There's several of these screws and when I take these screws out, I want to make sure that these screws are all the same length. Daiwa and other manufacturers tend to uh, put some screws in there that are uh, smaller or longer or a different diameter. Uh, they all have a reason why they do it, but uh, you don't need to want to know that, nor do I. You just need to know where those smaller or longer screws go. This is a high-speed reel. This is a 6.4 to 1 reel. That's going to make the uh, lures, if you're jigging lures, uh, come back quicker and a lot of times you need that high speed for those lures. Sometimes the, uh, the lower speed wheels just can't produce the speed that the lures were designed for and uh, well you lose strikes because of that. Alright, there's four, there's one more screw here. Let me just want to check the back, make sure that they haven't put any screws in behind. Some uh, manufacturers put a screw or two in on the back side to complete the tightening down of the gear. We'll see what's going on here. This, all of those screws are the same, so I'm going to find a corner of my parts tray and put those into it. And you just want to check back here. Some manufacturers do put uh, screws behind there on these high-speed wheels. With those four screws removed, we should be able to remove the, the side plate case now. This one's been, a, been neglected for a while. You can see a lot of old dried greases and the like in there and one big old uh, main gear on there which gives you the high speed. All right, there's several tension washers on the front end of this case, so I want to take those out. There's a flat washer and then there's a burring underneath that. So just again, notice the sequence. The flat washer goes on top of the bearing. The bearing's turning nicely. That'll probably fall out as well. All right, so the bearing comes out these washers I'm going to put into a safe place in my box. I'll take a moment to oil that bearing. It's a shielded bearing so the oil will seep into it. On the inside here we have a little bit of cleanup going on. 
the anti-reverse roller clutch this piece here needs to remain dry so if you're using things like a penetrating oil here to dissolve some of that old grease and the like just make sure that you keep it away from the roller clutch the roller clutch is a friction driven device it needs to be dry all right notice on here as well there is a stud right here on the eccentric and that stud is going to mesh in with the jack for the free spool so when you go to reassemble we'll show you that in a little while but when you go to reassemble that stud needs to fit inside the jack okay rather straightforward design for that most bait casters have this one's a high speed so it's got a bigger gear the speed of the reel is determined by the ratio for every one time that the gear goes around how many times does the pinion gear turn so this says 6.4 to 1 I understand from my engineering friends that if you count the number of teeth on the small gear and the number of teeth on the big gear and you do the division gear teeth divided by small gear teeth that will tell you the, um, the gear ratio as well. Okay, we're going to remove the main gear now. That whole piece is coming up. You have a gear sleeve which is going to go inside the roller clutch. And we have the gear stack. These are always fun to try and get off. Usually these get pressed down, and when they get pressed down, the um, little ridges get tight. Let's see if we can find a way to just kind of... There we go. This probably will come off. Now I guess we're going to walk these off one by one. This is your anti-reverse dog that just fell off. I'll show you how to put that back on. Let me just take a moment here to get the rest of these. So. Seems that the keyed washers are the ones that are kind of stuck. Not a problem. Just don't have the I don't have the hand strength myself to do it. Okay, when gear is off. This is your your anti-reverse. And your anti-reverse has got the old-fashioned uh, split or forked. Uh, tongues on them. This is a secondary anti-reverse. The first one is going to be that anti-reverse clutch. This is a fail-safe. All right, we've uh, mentioned that we have a six drag system. I mean, I've said specifically six drags, but well, we have more than a six drag system, which means you're going to have a little bit more max drag. Got a lot of, so this has got a huge max drag in it. Max drag is a function of surface area. We've got a 10 drag system here. We'll show you how that comes together in a moment. And then on the back we have a stopper washer. Well, we've got a lot of pieces and parts laying on the table here. That's another reason to take the pictures because, well, sometimes you just lose control and you think you know where it's going to go, but it doesn't. You want to clean out the cavity here of the old greases. Inspect the teeth on this. These are all clean. If you needed to clean them further, get a hard brush and just pull it through the teeth to remove any old greases, dirt, and the like. Okay, just going to take that for a moment. We'll leave all of this on the table. Probably not recommended all the time, but I only have one more cleanup exercise to do here. I'm going to remove the yoke and the pinion gear. Notice that on one side of the pinion gear you have the slot for the spool that faces in. And then we have the jack for the free spool. Well, the biggest issue with this is exactly what the, the customer said. just needs a good cleaning. It does. And, uh, well, that's what we're doing here. I'm going to use a paper towel. I always like to use the least abrasive methods possible when cleaning. Sometimes you're going to need to get aggressive. Sometimes you're going to need a steel wool or something to 
buff out some corrosion or the like, but if you can wipe the stuff off with a paper towel or something, just go ahead and do that. If you find you need a little bit more assist, try a penetrating oil like this as a grease buster. That'll help dissolve some of the older greases. Older greases can trap particulate and well, when you start uh, getting old sand and dirt and the like in there, well, they become abrasive and uh, that abrasiveness can ruin the reel over time. All right, just one final piece here with a little Q-tip to get some of the spots that uh, I couldn't reach with the paper towel. And this side's clean. So now we're back to we're basically a reinstall. Let's show you how that goes. This is the free spool jack. A little bit of light grease on there. There's way too much grease in this case. I don't know why we were greasing the case in some of those spots. There's a little stud right here. That jack is going to fit over and it's going to ride up and down to push your free spool. Uh, your yoke and pinion gear into free spool, uh, into free spooling. Okay, let's wipe that down. Notice there's a little indentation there. That's a good place to take a picture, as you're going to see that uh, it does matter. On the yokes, you're probably going to find two of these little spool spring shields. I found one. <laughs> You know, check into my paper towel here just to see if the other one came off. Yep, the other one came off on my paper towel. So just be careful. Let's go over the yoke uh, ahead of the spring. Do the same thing here in terms of the pinion gear. Check the teeth. These are nice and clean. Remember, this side goes out. And now we can just... Take a moment, put some new grease onto the shoulder of that yoke. Put the pinion gear in. And a good amount of grease onto the pinion gear. Once you do that, you can lay that back in. It goes over the, over the spool, slot side in, and then it lays down on top. These two springs go next. These are a lot of springs. I call them springs. Washers. They go under the spring. And that's the so that this tail end of the spring does not get trapped in the yoke. Okay, that's your pinion gear setup. Let's go over to your main gear setup now. First thing up is that ratchet. Now the ratchet is going to sit down or the, the anti-reverse. You're going to split the fingers on that anti-reverse dog and it's going to sit down. We've got a square so we're going to bring this over the gear post. Put the anti-reverse dog on this post and then make sure that the square is seated on the gear shaft, just like that. With that done, I'm going to find that small washer. This is another problem with putting all these little pieces and parts out on the table. Here it is. Small washer. And I'm going to do the same thing I did with the pinion gear here. I'm going to put a good amount of grease onto the, the main. I'm using pen precision real grease for this. I'm using an artist's brush because the artist's brush doesn't shed hairs. Or usually doesn't shed hairs. And uh, I said many times, I don't care what grease you use, but please use fishing real grease. Okay, with that done, we can go ahead and bring this back in and merge that with the. Okay, I've taken a moment to lay these out in the sequence that they go. We're going to start with a, a drag washer. We're going to go to a squared or keyed washer, drag washer. Uh, then we're going to go to the eared washer and so on, alternating the metals and uh, starting with a drag washer. These are plenty wet with uh, grease. You do not need to grease them any further. 
So first one in then is going to be the rectangular or the keyed washer after you put a drag washer in. Second drag washer and we have the eared washer and we have another drag washer, second keyed washer. These are the ones we were just kind of snapping in and out. You can see that they pretty tight fit on there. So the keyed washers, the one with the rectangle, are going to grab your gear shaft. The ones with the ears are going to dra dra um, grab your drag washer, or your main gear. And between the two of them, they're going to hold the, the shaft and hold the gear, and that's what's going to enable you to get the drag pressure controlled. All right, I'm just going to wipe my hands for a moment. Now that looks a whole lot cleaner than it was before. So we can start uh, putting the case back on now. I'm going to put the two springs on for the yoke springs. We can oil the assembly for the eccentric. And again, we don't want to get any oil onto your roller clutch. With that in place now, remember what we said, you're going to need to mesh that little stud with the groove in the jack here. That's fully up, so if we put this fully up, we should be close in the mesh. And we'll just work it, see how we can get this in and out. When you get to about here, it's a good time to start just tripping that lever a little bit. See if you can't kind of work it in. We're not there. There we go. I think we are now. In this position, we should have free spool. If we flip it over, we should see the handle turn. And we do. So we've got that stud matched properly. Next up, then, we're going to take the five side plate screw case screws. And we'll take our screwdriver and just put those in. When I put these in, I like to alternate directions on them to keep the tension on the case correct. So that I don't get a warp or a bow or any kind of needless kind of pressure there that could come from installing it circular. So I'm going to come over to the other side here and put this one in. And we'll just alternate. Well, if you have any questions on this reel or any reel in particular, if you're working on one, maybe you're encountering a problem, maybe you're uh, you just returned from a fishing trip and something didn't work right with your reel, you're trying to figure out what, what that problem is, if you want to leave that question in the comment section, I'll try to answer that for you. I do try to answer my questions in the morning, so uh, if you're leaving one in the evening, don't expect a uh, fast response. And uh, I do try to answer most of them. You'll see a business card on the end. It's got a telephone number on it. I don't recommend that you call that. I don't have an opportunity to answer the phone much. And uh, most of the time, folks will try and call. They have a sense of urgency, which is completely understood. And uh, most of the time, I have, well, doing something like this, doing a video or whatever, and just uh, can't leave the video to answer the phone. Okay, all five are in. Let's make sure that it's working the way it should again. Spin it, fine. Handle turning, yes, we're good. Next thing in was that bearing we oiled earlier. Let's get that bearing down. And we had a flat washer. Actually, we have two flat washers. I didn't notice the second one when I did that. And we have two tension washers. The tension washers are uh, they're not flat, they are concave. I like to put the first one belly up, if you will, and the second one belly down. That gives you uh, that controls the tension on your star adjuster. Remember we said that this little click mechanism has the opening face up. We can go back to our the parts tray. I'm going to wipe off some of the film on the uh, star adjuster. How many use a rod and wheel cleaner on this? See if it makes a difference. No, it doesn't. There's, there's some crushed metal going on. It cleans up the back, that's for sure. But there's some uh, 
brush, maybe this is an aluminum piece, I'm not sure. You can see that there's some discoloration there. All right, start the reinstall of your star adjuster. Make sure it goes on square. When you get down to here where that, uh, that little click noisemaker is going to go, if you find that it's not going, just take a little screwdriver and push it in so that it gets underneath the lip and then continue. And you can hear that the noisemaker is working properly. This has got a washer or a hold fast. It's got the handle side to it. We'll take the handle. And we can use that little pad with the cleaner on it there as well. There's a little bit of film, I'm sure it's because it's been on the water. And all we have to do is go over to the other side, take care of that one side plate bearing. And uh, well, this, this reel will be ready for action. This is a, a pure conventional reel. It does not have a level wind on it. You know, level winds have become popular lately, but sometimes level winds tend to get in the way. And there's a lot of folks that are fishing out there that have a preference for non-level wind reels. And that would include myself. Okay, just make sure that your handle nut is going out square. This one seems to be tracking a little bit off. Don't force anything. You'll strip the gears or strip the handle cap. That's better. Okay. All right, that one's done. Tighten this up. You want to align a scallop with the hole for the hold fast screw. And we can place that screw in there. We'll go over to the other side. So these are very popular reels. This is a 40H. The original 40H were the C lines. And uh, boy, were they. Uh, well, the 50H was the bulletproof saltwater reel. You just couldn't touch that one. I'm not sure if we had a 40H or a 47H. I think we had a 47H in that series. Okay, we can give it a quick test now, make sure it's running nicely, which it is. Let's just remove this side plate. And somebody did me a favor here. We've got a couple of different uh, screws here. We have two regular screws and a, uh, a hex or torx screw. I'm imagining at some point in time that piece fell out. So I guess we'll play with that one first, try and find a, a Torx screwdriver to handle that one. Right on the first guess, that doesn't happen too frequently. I have a case of uh, Torx screwdrivers that I've purchased. Some of the upper end reels have moved over to Torx screws now. I'm going to assume it's for their convenience, not mine. I see what happened. This screw's got a uh, little butterflying going on as well. I suspect that probably happened on the other one. Somebody got over uh, ambitious, taking a screw out and butterflied the slots, not using the proper screwdriver. There's only three holding this side on. Again, we just want to get over. We'll put a drop of oil on the click mechanism. We'll put a drop of oil on the barrel. That's all that really needs to be done on this side. We did the major service on the other side. Thank you for sticking with me for uh, the complete work. Take that off. We have a bearing underneath here. Somebody's removed the brakes. There was spool brakes on there. No longer. Those two poles sitting out there hold the brakes. Just a little bit of oil on the bearing, a little bit of oil onto the click ratchet. If you had the uh, brakes in there, you could uh, pay attention to those. You don't. So let's just go realign this with the case holes and put it back together. Three screws. Just make sure they're tight. Be 
careful with the one that's butterfly. That's the one I'm putting in now. That may have been the result of somebody trying to use a mechanical screwdriver on it. It's kind of hard to butterfly one of these on removing it. It's quite possible somebody used a mechanical screwdriver trying to put it back in. The other one, I'm just going to say the one with the Torx here, that's probably just because it fell out. Boat vibration shakes the screws and wheels. These are traditionally used on boats. And if uh, they shake them enough, they will come out. All right, that's your full service of your Dio Saltist 40H. It's a beautiful uh, salt water reel. This one's uh, all cleaned up, lubed, ready to go fishing again. Well, I hope you've enjoyed that. If you did, please like the video. Again, I encourage you to subscribe if you like these types of uh, videos. And I welcome questions and comments uh, if, if you have those. To our first responders and essential personnel, thank you for everything it is that you do to keep us safe. I do appreciate everything it is that you do. To everyone, please stay safe, stay well, stay watching. Have a great time on the water. Keep your tackle ready to go fishing because you never know when they're going to bite. This is Dennis with Second Chance Tackle. Have a great day.